From glamorous Hollywood starlets to headline-grabbing scandals, celebrity gossip has always captivated our imaginations. But what if the stories that entertain us were hiding a much darker truth? Behind the glitz and glamour lies a world of manipulation, control, and even destruction. How did simple whispers become weapons? And what price did the stars pay? Join me as we uncover the sinister side of Hollywood's most enduring obsession, celebrity gossip. Gossip is as old as time itself, but in the 20th century, with the rise of Hollywood, gossip became more than just idle chatter. It became an industry, a force capable of shaping careers, toppling icons, and feeding the public's insatiable hunger for scandal. From the golden age of Hollywood to the tabloid fueled frenzy of the 1990s, celebrity Celebrity gossip evolved into something far more powerful and far more dangerous than anyone could have imagined. In this video, we'll explore the dark history of celebrity gossip, peeling back the layers of glamour to reveal the manipulation, exploitation, and sometimes outright lies that fueled the headlines. From the birth of Hollywood's first gossip columnist to the digital age where rumors spread like wildfire. This is the untold story of how gossip shaped and shattered the lives of stars we love. The early 20th century marked the rise of Hollywood as the global epicenter of entertainment. As silent films captivated audiences, a new kind of public figure emerged, the movie star. These stars were not just actors, they were icons, symbols of fantasy and glamour. What if this new kind of celebrity came with something we weren't ready for, an insatiable public appetite for the personal lives of the stars? It wasn't enough to see them on the silver screen. Audiences wanted to know everything about them, who they were dating, where they lived, and what scandals they might be hiding. Thus, the birth of modern day celebrity gossip was linked to the rise of Hollywood itself. By the 1910s and 1920s, Hollywood was transforming rapidly from a fledging industry into a powerful cultural force. And as the film industry grew, so did the power of the media that covered it. Enter the gossip columnist, a new breed of journalists whose job was not to review films, but to dig into the lives of the stars who made them. Figures like Luella Parsons and Hedda Hopper were among the first to realize the potential of this new form of journalism. They understood that in Hollywood, image was everything, and controlling that image could make or break a career. Luella Parsons, often dubbed the Queen of Hollywood Gossip, began her career in 1914. Parsons was more than just a writer, she was a powerful force within the industry. Her her columns syndicated across the country were read by millions and could dictate the public's opinion of a star. What many didn't realize was that Parsons often worked closely with the Hollywood studios in exchange for exclusive access and scoops. She would help the studios manage the images of their stars. If a scandal threatened to erupt, the studios would turn to Parsons to help control the narrative, spinning the story in a way that would protect their investment in a star. But this relationship was far from transparent. Parsons was known to use her influence to settle personal scores and further the interests of her powerful allies. She wasn't above publishing damaging rumors or outright fabrications if it served her agenda. Her influence was so great that many in Hollywood feared her pen as much as they did her, the studios themselves. Hedda Hopper, a former actress turned gossip columnist, joined the fray in the 30s. Unlike Parsons, who had strong ties to the studio, Hopper was a free agent, known for her sharp tongue and conservative views. Her columns were notorious for their ruthlessness, and she quickly became one of the most feared women in Hollywood. Hopper's rivalry with Parsons became legendary, with the two engaging in a power struggle that would last for decades. Together, they set the stage for a gossip-driven entertainment industry where personal lives were as much as part of the story as the films themselves. But the rise of the gossip wasn't just about entertainment, it was about control. The major studios of the time, like MGM and Warner Brothers, understood the power of image and went to great lengths to protect it. Stars were often bound by strict morality clauses in their contracts. 
which dictated how they were to behave both on and off screen. These clauses were designed to maintain the star's public personas as upstanding and virtuous, even if the reality was far from it. If a star's behavior threatened to tarnish their image, whether it was a, an affair, a drinking problem, or an unapproved political stance, the studios would use their connections with gossip columnists to control the narrative. Often this meant spinning the story in a way that minimized the damage, or if necessary, shifting the blame onto others. In many cases, gossip colonists were more than willing to play along, knowing that their access to the biggest stars and the juiciest stories depended on their co cooperation with the studios. The devastating power of gossip became all too clear in the case of Fatty Arbuckle. Arbuckle was one of the most popular comedians of his time, a beloved figure in silent cinema, but in 1921, his career came crashing down after he was accused of touching an actress in an inappropriate way, Virginia Rapp, during a wild party. Despite being acquitted of all charges, the scandal proved to be too much for Arbuckle's reputation. The relentless gossip columns painted him as a monster, and he was effectively blacklisted from Hollywood. Arbuckle's downfall was a chilling reminder of how quick Quickly, a star could fall from grace, regardless of their innocence or guilt. Similarly, Charlie Chaplin, one of the most iconic figures in film history, found himself hounded by gossip and rumors throughout his career. Chaplin, known for his progressive views and complex personal life, was an easy target for the gossip columnists. His relationships with younger women, his controversial films, and his alleged communist sympathies made him a frequent subject of scandalous stories. Though Chaplin's talent and popularity helped him weather many of these storms, the constant scrutiny took its toll. The relentless gossip surrounding his life was a clear indication of the power wielded by the media and how it could be used to control even the biggest stars in Hollywood. The golden age of Hollywood was not just a time of great films and larger than life stars. It was also the birth of a new kind of power, one held by those who controlled the narrative through gossip and where the line between public and private was increasingly blurred. The legacy of this era would echo throughout the decades as gossip became an integral part of the Hollywood machine, a machine that could create legends but also crush them. As Hollywood moved into the mid 20th century, the very nature of gossip began to change. The aftermath of World War II brought about a significant cultural shift. As Americans experienced unprecedented economic prosperity, with this boom came a growing consumer culture, and part of that culture was an intensified hunger for entertainment, and not just the kind found in movie theaters. Audiences now crave the real-life drama of the stars they adored. The result? A perfect storm that gave rise to the tabloid industry as we know it today. Enter Confidential Magazine, a publication that would forever change the landscape of celebrity journalism. Launched in 1952 by Robert Harrison, Confidential wasn't just another Hollywood magazine. It was a cultural phenomenon, with its motto, tell the facts and name the names. Confidential broke away from the gloss studio-controlled fan magazines of the past. It reveled in exposing the private lives of stars, often in lurid sensational detail. Confidential was not concerned with maintaining the studio system's carefully constructed images of the stars. Instead, it sought to tear down those images, revealing the messy, scandalous truths underneath or at least what it claimed were truths. The magazine was notorious for its mix of half-truths, innuendo, and outright fabrications. Yet it struck a chord with the public, who couldn't get enough of the salacious details it promised. For the first time, the industry had to contend with a media entity that was actively working against its interests, rather than a partnership with it. Confidential and other tabloids of the era targeted the biggest names in Hollywood, Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor, and Frank Sinatra. No one was safe. These stories, often embellished or entirely fabricated, were designed to shock. For many stars, it was a nightmare. The private lives they had worked so hard to keep hidden were suddenly out in the open for public consumption and the consequences could be devastating. For stars like Rock Hudson and Tab Hunter, whose careers were meticulously managed to conceal their homosexuality, the threat posed by tabloids was particularly acute. 
In the 1950s, being outed as gay could end a career overnight. Tabloids eager to exploit any hint of scandal were more than willing to threaten exposure unless stars played ball, sometimes quite literally paying hush money to keep their secrets out of the headlines. But it wasn't just the stars who lived in fear. Even those who weren't directly targeted by the tabloids felt the pressure to conform to Hollywood's strict morale codes. One misstep, an affair, a night of heavy drinking, a, a politically controversial statement could lead to a public relations disaster. The fear of scandal was pervasive, and it often dictated how stars behaved both in public and private. Yet the tabloids were not just content with personal scandals. They also played a significant role in the political smear campaigns of the era. The relationship between Hollywood and Washington had always been complex, but during the Red Scare of the 50s, it reached new heights. As America grew grappled with the fear of communist infiltration, the entertainment industry found itself in the crosshairs of a national witch hunt. Gossip columnists and tabloids became key players in this hysteria, often fanning the flames of suspicion. Hollywood, with its influence over public opinion, was seen by many as a potential breeding ground for communist sympathizers. The House Un-American Activities Committee began investigating alleged communist activity within the industry, and the consequences were dire. Many actors, writers, and directors were blacklisted, unable to find work simply because they had been accused, often without evidence or having communist ties. Figures like Ilya Kazan and Edward Dimtrick were among those caught in the crossfire. Kazan, a prominent director, was called before HUAC in 1952 and faced a difficult choice, name names or risk his career. Ultimately, Kazan chose to cooperate, a decision that made him a pariah among many of his peers, even as he continued to work. Dimitrik, a member of the Hollywood Ten, was less fortunate. After refusing to testify, he was jailed for contempt of Congress and later blacklisted. When he eventually agreed to testify and name names, his reputation was permanently tarnished. The role of the gossip media during this period cannot be overstated. They weren't just reporting on the events, they were actively shaping them. By publicizing accusations, insinuations, they fueled the paranoia that gripped the nation, contributing to the destruction of careers and lives. The tabloids, once merely a source of entertainment, had become instruments of fear and repression. The rise of tabloid culture in the 50s and 60s marked a turning point in the history of celebrity gossip. No longer confined to the whispers of Hollywood insiders, gossip became a powerful, persuasive force that could destroy reputations, manipulate public opinion, and even influence the course of history. It was a world where scandals sold and where the truth was often the first casualty. As the 1990s ushered in a new era of technology, the world of celebrity gossip underwent a transformation unlike anything seen before. The rise of the internet fundamentally changed how gossip was consumed, moving it from a niche interest to a global obsession. With the click of a mouse, rumors and scandals were now spread across the world in seconds, reaching millions of people who were eager for the latest scoop on their favorite stars. The 1990s saw the emergence of the first major celebrity gossip websites, marking a pivotal moment in media history. The Drudge Report, launched by Matt Drudge in 1996, was among the first to capitalize on the internet's potential to break news quickly and sensationally. Drudge's most famous scoop came in 1998 when he broke the story of President Bill Clinton's affair with Monica Lewinsky, an explosive revelation that shook the foundations of American politics and demonstrated the immense power of online gossip. This moment was a turning point. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false and I need to go back to work for the American people. 
No longer were gossip and scandal confided to the pages of tabloids or the whispers of the Hollywood insiders. The internet had democratized information, making it available to anyone with a connection. Suddenly, the public had access to a new, unfiltered wave of celebrity gossip, free from the gatekeeping of traditional media outlets. Even though nowadays, I feel like the media is trying to gatekeep social media platforms and only choose what they want people to believe. This shift had profound implications for the, both the media landscape and the celebrities who found themselves under its relentless gaze. On the one hand, the internet empowered a new wave of independent journalists and bloggers who could challenge the establishment and the media narrative. Sites like Perez Hilton, launched in 2004, quickly gained notoriety for their bold, unapologetic style. Perez Hilton's blog, in particular, became infamous for its crude commentary and scandalous revelations, often targeting Hollywood's biggest names with little regard for accuracy or the potential damage caused. These bloggers of their newfound power, turning gossip into a kind of digital warfare where no one was safe. On the other hand, the internet's lack of regulation and sheer spread at which information spread meant that unverified rumors and outright falsehoods could circulate very quickly. A single tweet, a doctored photo, or a dubious blog post could go viral in minutes reaching a vast audience with little to no fact-checking. The new reality had a profound impact on the nature of celebrity gossip, where the line between the truth and fiction became increasingly blurred. Throughout the 1990s, the nature of celebrity gossip became increasingly invasive and predatory. The media frenzy surrounding O.J. Simpson's trial in 1994 was one of the first major events to highlight this shift. Dubbed the trial of the century, the case was broadcast live on television with every detail of O.J. Simpson's life and the lives of those involved scrutinized and sensationalized. The relentless media coverage blurred the lines between news and entertainment, turning a real-life tragedy into a spectacle for public consumption. But perhaps the most tragic example of the dark side of digital age gossip was the death of Princess Diana in 1997. Hounded by paparazzi at every turn, Diana's life and ultimately her death became a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked media. The car crash that claimed her life in a Paris tunnel was directly linked to the paparazzi's relentless pursuit for the perfect photo. Her death shocked the world and sparked a global conversation about the ethics of tabloid journalism and the public's insatiable appetite for celebrity news. In the wake of Diana's death, there was a brief moment of introspection within the media and the industry. Calls from a responsible journalism were loud, but the momentum of the digital age was unstoppable. As the internet continued to evolve, so did the nature of celebrity gossip, becoming even more pervasive and harder to control. As the new millennium approached, the digital age of gossip reached new heights. Social media platforms like MySpace and Facebook emerged, further blurring the lines between celebrities and the public. Now anyone could become a gossip colonist, spreading rumors and commenting on the lives of the rich and famous with just a few keystrokes. The internet had given a rise to a new kind of celebrity culture, one that was instant, relentless, and often unforgiving. No one was more emblematic of this new reality than Britney Spears. The pop star who had been a fixture in the public eye since her teenage years became the subject of intense media scrutiny as her personal life unraveled in the mid-2000s. Every moment of vulnerability was captured and broadcast to the world to see. The media's treatment of Spears was brutal, and it raised serious questions about the ethics of celebrity journalism in the digital age. The relentless pursuit of scandal had real-world consequences, not just for the celebrities involved, but for the co broader culture as well. In this new digital age, no one was immune to the scrutiny of the public eye. The line between news and entertainment had become so blurred that for many, there was no distinction at all. Gossip was no longer a sideshow, it was the main event and the public couldn't get enough. As the internet continued to evolve, the power of gossip only grew stronger. The speed which information could spread, the lack of accountability, and the sheer volume of content being produced created a perfect storm. One that would forever change the landscape of celebrity culture. The digital age had given rise to a new era of gossip, one where the lines between fact and fiction, news and entertainment had all but disappeared. 
And the rise of social media in the late 90s and early 2000s didn't just transform the way we communicate, it revolutionized the very nature of celebrity gossip. Suddenly, gossip no longer needed to be mediated by journalists or tabloids. It could be spread directly from person to person, often with devastating speed. Welcome to the era of cancel culture, where the court of public opinion can elevate or destroy a celebrity in the blink of an eye. Cancel culture as we know it today is a direct descendant of the gossip industry's long history of scandal and exposure. But unlike the gossip columns of old, which were often driven by personal vendettas and commercial interests, cancel culture is fueled by the collective power of the internet. A single tweet, a viral video, or a trending hashtag can bring down a celebrity's career in a matter of hours. The speed at which a celebrity can be cancelled, stripped of endorsements, dropped from projects, and ostracized from the industry has redefined what it means to be a public figure. But what exactly is cancel culture? At its core, it's the practice of collectively calling out, boycotting, or shunning public figures, and often celebrities, who have perceived to have said or done something offensive and or unacceptable. In theory, it's a way for society to hold people accountable for their actions, particularly those who wield significant influence. However, in practice, cancel culture can be more complex and at times deeply problematic. One of the most significant differences between traditional gossip and modern cancel culture is the democratization of influence. In the past, gossip columnists and tabloids had the, had the power to shape public opinion and celebrity. Today, the power lies in the hands of millions of ordinary people. A tweet or a post from a single person can go viral, igniting a firestorm that engulfs the celebrity in question. This shift has made cancel culture both more accessible and more unpredictable. But cancel culture is not without its controversies. Critics argue that it can lead to a kind of digital mob mentality, where the rush to judgment is often based on incomplete or misleading information. In some cases, the consequences of being canceled can be disproportionate to the actual offense. The fear of being canceled has led some public figures to self-censor or retreat from the public altogether. And moreover, the consequences of cancel culture can extend beyond the individual celebrity. Entire projects, films, television shows, and endorsement deals can be derailed when a star is cancelled. Just not affecting the celebrity, but all the other people that work for the celebrity as a far-reaching ripple effect. And notable examples are Roseanne Barr's 2018 cancellation. After posting a racist tweet, Barr was swiftly condemned online, leading to the immediate cancellation of her hit TV show, Roseanne. While many applauded the decision as a necessary stand against racism, it also meant the loss of jobs for all the people that worked on the show. Similarly, Kevin Spacey's removal from the projects like House of Cars and the film All the Money in the World led to costly reshoots and significant disruptions. And as we look into the future, it's clear that cancel culture will remain that powerful force in the realm of celebrity gossip. Um, I feel like a lot of people are kind of sick of it in some ways. I mean, obviously, I think if people do horrible things, then it should be called out. But I hate the mob mentality and not letting people have a, a voice to defend themselves or like even go to trial. You know what I mean? It's like innocent until proven guilty in some ways. Obviously, I'm not condoning cancel culture and or condoning the celebrities that obviously have done horrible things like Kevin Spacey. I'm just saying that sometimes people can go too far without seeing both sides of the story. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on celebrity gossip. Do you consume a lot of it? Um, do you read tabloid magazines? I guess they're not, mo everything's mostly digital now. Anyways, curious to know your thoughts below and don't forget to check out some of my other dark history videos.